bless you. God bless you guys. God bless you. God bless you. God bless y'all. God bless you. Hold it. This camera angle. I'm kind of tired holding my arms up here. <laughs> hey, Stephanie. God bless you. <clears throat> yeah, quick periscope real quick. Hello, Peace 11. Hello, Elder Kirk. Lorel, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Mm -mm. I never do. Hey, Dana. Hey, God bless. Hey, T. Ware. <laughs> Teacher 279, God bless you. <clears throat> I want to say this prophetically. Some people have tumors inside their body. Even some people that are connected to us. You've had... Um, hold on, give me one sec. Straighten up. Some people uh, who are connected to us. Hey, Brittany, God bless you. Some of y'all got tumors inside of your body. I want to say that God is healing you, but not in the way that you think. Not in the way that you think. Hey, God bless you, Deborah. Not in the way that you think you're going to be healed. Some of you all are going to go to the bathroom, and I'm not trying to be nasty or too graphic, but you're going to use the toilet, and the tumor is going to come out from that way. Hear me real good. God bless you, Teacher 279. The tumor is going to come out. It's going to flush. The glory of God is going to flush it out through your system by using the bathroom. If, you begin, if some of you all check after you use the toilet, you're going to see like a little small round knot. But it's not any uh, waste. It's not going to be waste. And that, in that manner, it's going to be a tumor that's going to come out in the toilet stool. Hey, Wendy, God bless you. <clears throat> so um, just be checking for that. Some of y'all are going to pass these tumors, and you don't even know that the enemy has stricken your body with cancer. But that's how good God is. And also because you connected. Hey, God bless you, born to prophesy. Because you connected to God's apostle. Me and uh, Apostle we pray. Me and Dr. April, we just came out of worship. We were praying for some things or whatever. And uh, I just wanted to, I had to get this out. It's like the Holy Spirit just dropped it in my spirit. I said, I had to get this out over social media. I had to get it out because some people connected to me do deal with tumors. And some people have had cancer. A lot of people have been healed from that and all, all kind of other diseases. I give God the glory for that. But I wanted to say this. This is going to be a unique and unusual way that God is going to heal you. When you go to the toilet. When you use the bathroom, you're going to pass the tumor out. God's going to flush you out, and you're going to be instantly healed. Go to the hospital. They're going to write you a clean bill of health. I give God the glory for that. Amen. Also, <clears throat> I want to say this before. Hey, Apostle, what is the Lord saying about my life? Amen, man of God. You're going to have to connect with me. Go to the email and uh, set up a prophetic coaching session. Connect with me. I'll tell you everything you want to know. Amen. Right now, I'm not really prophesying individually unless the Lord prompts me to. But I will say this, though. The website, somebody post a website up for him. Thank you, Dana. There it is. One of my daughters posted it up. Go to the website. You can email us through the website. When you go to our website, um, there's an email link that you can send it through. So go to the website and send it. And uh, set up an appointment, man. I love to talk with you. Glory to God. Man of God, I had a vision of another mass shooting in the U.S. Bingo. That is going to happen, sadly. I prophesied that as well. Yeah, the, your prophetic is being cultivated. So that was a vision from the Lord. We got to pray against these things, though. We don't want to prophesy so badly to the point where it manifests and we get you know, recognition and stuff like that. God gets ultimate recognition. But let's be honest. Let's be real. People who prophesy these things, we do get recognition or you know, some form of credit because we the ones spoke it on behalf of the Messiah, the behalf of the Lord. But I don't want recognition so badly at the expense of people getting hurt, killed, dying. I prophesy these things not because I want attention, but I prophesy these things as a prophetic warning, as a prophetic warning to the people so that we can do, number one, intercede and pray and also prepare the hearts of the families and other people. That's the whole reason why when the Holy Spirit showed me some things, I released them. Some things I don't even release. He shows it to me as a prophet just so I can go into my prayer closet and intercede for weeks, months, however long he had me there on, on behalf of the nation or nations, person or family or individuals. But uh, I teach that in the prophetic school or the school of the prophets. We'll talk about that more later. But um, that is a vision from the, the Messiah and that is 
and a seed for the people or the nation. Amen. That is a vision from the Messiah. I confirm that the Bible says prophets are subject to one another. So uh, uh, I confirm that in my spirit for you as well. But lastly, <clears throat> what I got on here for, thank God for the prophet. Amen. And thank God for the apostles as well. I'm, a, I'm one who operate as an apostle, as a prophet, and as a pastor, and my wife, so forth. But um, I want to say this. It's been some prophetic bullies. What I mean by prophetic bullies is, <coughs> is some of you guys, thank you, continue to do so. We need our intercessors. Amen. It, it, some people have been subject to people using their gift, using their office, using their title, using their ranking in the spirit to treat people any kind of way. I understand correction. I understand conviction. We as leaders are supposed to preach and teach correction rebuke people rebuke people we pose to correct people the whole nine that is our job that is our mandate you signed up uh what's under uh, stephanie tell oh well, you send me an inbox stephanie because i don't know i gotta check that i gotta have them check that send me an inbox i'll talk to you more detail about prophetic coaching off of this but send me an inbox and, and remind me so i can talk to you but what i was saying is <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> Holy Ghost helped me I lost my train of thought But yeah it's been some prophetic bullies um, You know we as a prof as prophets Apostles, pastors It's our job to correct the sheep It's our job to rebuke the sheep in love It's our job to 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 help you get in check and get in line. That's our job. But it is not our job to hold our power, our title, our rank over you. Even if you're wrong, even if you're wrong, we are just to, supposed to pray for you. But it is not our job to hold you in captivity and try to put you in bondage because we disagree with you or right bash others or we don't feel that you are aligning with what we're telling you according to the word of god that's not our job that as a leader that's not my job my job is to pray for you and release you into the hands of god i have something to say about those who have offended me those who have re uh, rejected me those who have not listened to my counsel yes that's natural i have something to say about that i have my opinion i have my feelings but I cross the line when I allow my feelings and my opinions to begin to speak curses over people's life. When that happens, it, it turns from conviction, it turns from correction, it turns from rebuke, and it turns into what's called witchcraft. You can, when you begin to try to speak bad, the Bible says speak evil of no man. So when you begin to speak bad, you're spitting curses out against a person's soul that can cause damage and harm. That's not the way of God. God operates in love. And there are some prophetic bullies. I won't say any names because it's not my job to call out the name specifically. God will expose itself. It's not my job as a prophet to expose. It's my job to cover so that restoration can take place within the body of Christ. But it's my job to expose sin, the sin nature. And it's my job to preach against this wicked sin. So I'm not going to call out the people like a lot of immature prophets. When I say the word immature, I'm not trying to be derogatory or anything like that. When I say the word immature, I mean a prophet that is seasoned, a prophet that hasn't had their character fine tuned, a prophet that may be new to their gifts. They excited to use them. They anxious to call out everybody because that's why prophets are fine tuned deep in our heart, deep in our spirit. We can't stand sin. So we just want to call everybody out that we can, especially new prophets. So when I say immature prophets, it's not in a derogatory nature or to harm anyone's feelings, but I'm saying that in the sense that they're not seasoned, they're not, they don't have enough wisdom, enough years under their belt to understand the prophetic fully. And even once you get wisdom and become a seasoned prophet, as a prophet, you are always learning, always gravit gravitating towards more of the Lord. Glory to glory. Somebody asks, asks a question, how to go to another dimension? You can learn that in the school of the prophets. We're going to be coming up with a school, the school very soon. But I will say this. The Bible says it takes us from glory to glory. That context in scripture, when it says from glory to glory, it means from dimension to dimension in God. 
God. That's not just for prophets. That's just for the entire body of Christ. In order to remove, in order to move from glory to glory or dimension to dimension, there are certain techniques that you must do, and you must have a lifestyle in accordance to that. We talk about that in the school of the prophets. Yes. Now back to what I was saying. <clears throat> How do you know it's your gift? Number one, you're going to have an inner knowing inside of you. You're just going to know it. It's going to bubble up. You're going to know it. It's, it's something that you just can't contain. You can't stop sleeping. You can't like that boyfriend that you once loved. You can't think about Anytime you're away from him, you're thinking about him. You can't go to sleep. You're tossing and turning. The same thing going to be with your gifts. You're going to feel it. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be so a part of you. If you're not operating or using the, your gifts or walking in that office according to the purpose and will of God for your life, what would end up happening is you will not feel fulfilled and you will not feel complete. So you're going to have a deep inner knowing, just like that boyfriend or that girlfriend, that when you're not connected to them, it's annoying. It's a feeling. You just can't get over it. Glory to God. But like I was saying, it's been some prophetic bully. Hey, Linda, God bless your daughter. Amen. And I teach you, I teach you, my wife, Dr. April, teach this stuff as well as uh, our bishop, the School of the Prophets is coming up. Y'all, we want y'all to sign up. There will be a, a small fee, a C for this. We're making it affordable for the people. But if you value it, you value it. And uh, we'll be giving away certification certificates uh, at the end of the class, at the end of the courses. But this is just a little bit of it. It's going to be a professional uh, 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 teaching and, and schooling and classes and so forth. But I want to say this, <clears throat> prophetic bullies are out there and I don't agree with that. I have many prophetic night visions and eulogy prophetic come from when praying for others. Amen. That's how God uses you. He's also, if you're not used in dreams, he's going to start using you in dreams. Thank you, Dana. Yes, connect KCI worldwide, KCI.world, connect with us. But it's been prophetic bullies out there, and I can't stand prophetic bullies. I can't stand apostolic bullies. I can't stand bullies. As I said before, when I was in school, I was the one that knocked out bullies. I'm not condoning fighting physically, but that's my past. I was always good with my hands. But now, for the for years, I've been a man of God. I knock out bullies in the spirit. So I stand. I stand in the gap. The Bible says he's looking. He was searching all around the earth for someone, for one just to stand in a gap. I stand in a gap along with many others, but I'm speaking on myself. I stand in a gap on behalf of those people that, that are getting harmed or hindered or they afraid because of these prophetic bullies. Some people have instilled so much fear. Some people that walk in the prophetic or the apostolic, they instill so much fear in the people. They are afraid to the point. It's not even the words that the prophet spoke against them. It's the fear that has that has manifested inside their mind, their spirit, and then it begins to uh, materialize within their body, and then that's how sickness come in. It's not because of the curse, but it's because of the fear. Fear is a doorway to infirmities. Fear is a doorway to infirmity. So some people are so afraid because of these people have put fear and instilled fear inside of them to the point where it opens up a door for their body to begin to manifest sickness. And that's not God. So it's not necessarily the powerful prophet speaking the curse. Yes, there are prophets that can speak and block your blessings and all of that. We know how to do that. But when you begin to use it in a wicked way, it becomes satanic in nature. It becomes anti-Christ. Anti mean against Jesus, against God. So you don't supposed to use your gift like that. Even in the New Testament, Apostle Paul has spoke and then he spoke to this man who was who was just basically blaspheming, following him around and mocking God. And he spoke. And then the Bible says a darkness came over this man and the man began to be he began to become dumb. He could not speak anymore. Apostle Paul said, because of you done, because you've done this, I release God's judgment and, and so forth and so forth. It's in scripture in the New Testament. So as apostles and prophets, we have that authority. But Paul, when he operated in an authority, he didn't operate it from the standpoint of something that was wicked. He operated from the standpoint is that he wanted that man's soul to be saved. But nowadays you have apostles and prophets. They operate not just for the soul to be saved. They operate in the, out of this spirit to instill still fear in others and still captivity in others because of flesh, because of people purely disagreeing with them. And I don't care who you is, somebody not going to always agree with you, but that don't mean that you got to spew out curses against them. You become a prophetic bully with that. And I can't stand prophetic bullies. There's some high ranking in, in, in the media uh, uh, prophets and apostles right now that are spewing out curses over people just because people calling them out about sleeping with young women. 
Did you hear what I said? But what's going to happen is if you continue to do God, and this is a warning right here. You can share this scope. You can go run. If any of uh, spies on here, go run and tell them I said it because I am a face to face prophet and the Lord loves me and my wife. I don't fear nothing or no man. I only fear God. I'm saying this as a warning. This is a prophetic declaration. If you continue to treat the people of God like you do, if you continue to use witchcraft to entrap them, if you continue to bully them just because they disagree with you or they may be wrong, but you can't. It's like my child and my child wrong. I'm going to spank my child. But when I begin to punch my child in the face, beat them, then it becomes abuse. You cannot abuse the people of God. And if you continue to do this, because I already see in the spirit some things that you have not been doing holy, but that's neither here nor there. The real prophets and apostles can see beyond the veil or beyond the natural of what you show on TV. If you continue to do this, I ain't nobody. I'm a I'm a small prophet out here in Orlando, Florida, trying to build a church. So. Well, you can mark my word. If you continue to do this, what's going to happen is God's going to begin to expose you. He's going to begin. I'm not going to expose you. That's not my job. God is going to begin to expose you. It's going to be in the media. You're going to begin to go through court case scandals. You're going to begin to go through scandals with all these babies that you have impregnated in people. They're going to begin to pop up and it's going to damage and destroy your ministry. Leave the people of God alone. It's one thing to correct. It's one thing to teach. It's one thing to rebuke. But when you become a prophetic bully and you begin to abuse people, God going to get you for that. Every curse you spit against this periscope, every curse you spit against my life, every curse you spit against my, my ministry, it shall not prosper. The Messiah has already told me. But you better be careful that it don't be a boomerang effect. Back to all the things that are the great empire empires that you are building. And I speak to you as a man, face to face. Look me in my eyes like a man. Look me in my eyes like a man. I speak to you as a man of God. I speak to you as an end time apostle and prophet. Repent. And Pharaoh, let my, pe let my people go. Some of you all have been held for years in bondage to the curses and the prophetic words that these people have spoken over you. But God is saying, Pharaoh! Let my people go. Pharaoh, let my people go. Pharaoh, let my people go. <laughs> Think it's a joke. On that note, in Jesus' name, I love y'all. Don't be afraid of the prophetic bullies. School of the prophets coming soon. We're going to teach you. It's going to be a sign-up fee. It's going to be a seed that you're going to have to send to sign up for. But we're going to teach you. Already, haven't I taught y'all something already? Y'all already, y'all like, what? teach me more, teach me more. What's this apostle? What's that apostle? Haven't I been teaching you all? Glory to God. But this ain't nothing compared to what we are going to teach you in the up-and-coming months at the School of the Prophets. Hallelujah. I love you too. Somebody post up the website, get to know who we is, take advantage of all the available and wonderful programs that we have. Glory to God, you a sponge. You say chills on your arms, you got strength, and also creative miracles are taking place in your life. That's what the arms mean, strength, and also creative miracles. Get ready for it. Connect with us. Love you too, Brittany. Connect with us. Take advantage of all the wonderful programs. Take advantage of all the teachings, the free teachings, lessons that we have, and connect with us. Send us emails. Send us letters. Be a monthly partner with us. We're looking for monthly partners because we're doing, trying to do major things here in Orlando and across the entire globe, actually. So connect with us. we got so many monthly partners already from all over the world. they sending in monthly partnerships, $50, $100, $200, $300. We're trying to get even more because the kingdom of God got to be spread. And when people sow into this ministry every month, they receive major blessings. You can and ask the people that's already doing it. So connect with us. Find out about the ministry. Take advantage of the free programs. Connect with us and stay tuned for the School of the Prophets. Don't be afraid of these prophetic bullies. Don't be afraid of them. Don't be afraid of them. But I can teach you a prayer that can cancel and crush every form of witchcraft that anybody ever throws at you in your life. I love you. Glory to God. Consecration. I need to know how. Connect with me. You can connect with me on Facebook too. Send me a message. Send me an email. Inbox through Messenger. Andrew Smith or my wife, April Mitchell Smith on Facebook. Or you can connect with us. Send us an email on uh, through the website as well. You want to know how to break witchcraft. You want to, I mean, you want to know how to consecrate. I can give you some tips. 
tips and also uh, uh, share with you some other things on how you can get also prophetic coaching and so forth. So connect with us, www.kci.world. Thank you, Dana. Love you. Amen. Glory to God. Also, should have reminded me, Dana. I almost forgot that uh, actually last week the Holy Spirit had told me to send you something. I forgot about that. You should have reminded me. I'm, a, I'm about to head out now with Dr. April, and uh, I'm going to send that off to you. All right. Uh, matter of fact, inbox me your information again. You know what I'm talking about. Inbox me your information so I can have it on hand. Glory to God. I love y'all. Connect with me. This is your apostle, your prophet, your pastor, Andrew, and my wife, Dr. April Mitchell Smith. God bless you. Hallelujah. <laughs> your father, your father, father, Andrew Smith, LOL. So they know it now. They quote it. Hey, man. God bless you all. God bless you. God bless y'all. Signing off to next time. Prophetic bullies, don't be afraid of them. Just love on them and ask God to let his will be done in Jesus' wonder work your name. The bullies are the ones that need the most love. The bullies are the ones that need the most love, Dr. April just said. Amen. All right. Talk to y'all later. Signing off. Uh, Tom just said, hi, mom. God bless you. <laughs> Talk to y'all later. Enjoy y'all weekend.